hope you guys have enjoyed the parts of the sewing organization videos that I have posted thus far. Today we're talking about my big four and print and um, yeah, printed pattern organization and storage. So I got these boxes and you guys are going to be really mad at me because for whatever reason, they discontinued them years ago. I mean, I got these right when I started sewing and thought that they were gonna be like a pretty common type of thing, uh, but turns out they aren't. So this is what they look like um, when you buy them flat. It's just corrugated cardboard that you, you know, fold and manipulate to make into these half file boxes. I really don't know why they stopped making these. I feel like, businesses and offices might need these half boxes but I have like over the years tried to buy more and have been unsuccessful. So there are some other options that are out there. They're just a lot more expensive because they're specifically for sewing patterns. Um, even though they're the same type of product. I think uh, maybe Nancy's Notions has one, um, but I will continue to look. If I ever find them again, I will update the description box, I promise, and I will put them in there because to me, they really are the best way to store patterns. And my pattern organization wasn't really a mess to begin with because I had these boxes, everything was organized, just nothing was labeled. And so it was very difficult for me. I had to open up each box to figure out what was inside. So I designed these labels to work with my Cricut Maker and it is a print then cut type of situation. So you'll see I filmed the entire process of how easy it is to uh, print then cut using the Cricut Maker and all the files are available to you guys. I've made them public. There will be a link in the description box to find them. So if you want to use my exact labels, you absolutely can do that. So without further ado, let me show you the process of making the labels and then I'll show you what the boxes look like with the labels in my little closet that I store a lot of my other sewing stuff. If it's not in the sewing room, it's in that closet. Okay, so this is the printer paper that I'm user, using, Avery 8165. And so the Cricut Maker is talking to my printer and the printer is printing out the images. And see how it looks like kind of smudgy um, along here? That's okay because that's just the bleed line and the maker is actually going to cut just inside of that, you'll see, and it looks um, nice and clean whenever it's done. All right, so then the next step is just to place it onto your standard grip mat and make sure it kind of gets sticky on there. I do my best to line it up, but it doesn't have to be perfect because you'll see the maker is gonna scan and look for this black line, the outer one, and that's how it knows where to orient itself, orientate, orient itself. I like to add syllables to words sometimes. Okay, anyways, so next up, you just go to your Cricut, you push the flashing arrow button, and on your computer, it's gonna go ahead and automatically prompt. I've done less pressure because it's cutting through like the sticker and the backing, um, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's all ready to go. It knows that I've got my fine point blade, blade on. I've told it to cut sticker paper. So you just push the flashing Cricut logo and it goes to town. And like I said, the first thing it's gonna do is scan and look for this black line. So you see that like flashlight that came on? That is just looking for the black line on all four sides. It's actually really cool and very smart. So now it's done scanning. It's gonna go clean the blade and then prepare itself for cutting. And now we cut.
And just like that, we are all done. I'm gonna push the eject button and we have got our new labels. And after you undo them from the thingamajig, here they are. Let's throw them on the wall. So you can see that little black border is definitely still there, but it's kind of like schmudgy. So there's one. And then here's what the tops look like. So I'll go get all of these printed and then place them on my boxes and show you what they look like. I'm so excited. They're so cute. All right. Here they all are in place in my little closet that I have that's attached to my sewing room. I think that this is just the easiest way to quickly see where the pattern I'm looking for lives. If I'm trying to make a dress, I know exactly where to go for the dresses. And I also told you guys I have a lot of dress patterns. If I'm looking to make, I don't know, pants or shorts or a skirt, I know where that lives. And it's just real easy to get to. So very happy that I was able to purge some patterns, get these labels on, and live happily ever after in my pattern organization. So there you have it. I think they all look really beautiful, kind of all lined up there. And obviously you can see those labels are nice and big. So it's easy to see what's inside and I can just go in and grab what I need. And also when I have a whole bunch of patterns out from working on projects, it's real easy to put them back too, which I think helps stay organized. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you will find a way to organize your patterns that make it easy for you. This is just how I do it. And maybe it gave you some insight on what you want to do with your printed patterns. That's going to do it for me today, though. I will see you all very soon. Bye.